Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Katie Kloon and I am part of the development team here at Synchro. Before we start the webinar, being that there is a lot of interest in our 15 minute Fridays, we will continue to hold these sessions throughout the summer. So please register if you haven't already. Additionally, all webinars will be posted on our YouTube page if you would like to share it with your colleagues or watch it over again. Finally, if there are any topics you would like us to cover, please let us know. Now I would like to introduce Kate Hester, a fellow member of our product development team, who will be providing instructions on how to filter in Synchro Pro. Filtering allows you to choose which project information to show or hide, whether it be tasks in the Gantt chart or objects in the 3D window. After the webinar, we will open the floor to any questions you may have, so please type those into your chat window. Any questions that we don't get to in the 15 minutes will be followed up with via email. Thank you, and I will now pass it over to Kate. Today I'm going to be talking about filtering in Synchro Pro. Synchro has some really great built-in filters, both in the 3D and in the task list. So I'll point out some of those built-in filters, and I'll also talk about creating some custom filters of your own. All of the filters in Synchro are over here in the Navigator panel on the left-hand side. Task filters are here under Filters, and 3D filters are right below it under 3D Sets. So I'll start today talking about task filters. You can see here listed the built-in filters, uh, started and finished tasks, key dates, and a one and two week look ahead. All, any of these filters are activated simply by left clicking to check that box. So now we have a two week look ahead in our task list. You can see there's a lot less tasks than there were before. Uh, where are those what, where are those two weeks starting? That we can see by scrolling down below to the look ahead panel. So we're seeing 14 days from our data date. And the data date is this blue dotted line you can see here in your Gantt chart. You can also check that date in the Navigator project. Under details you'll see, so we're looking at two weeks from March 2nd. Another thing you can do with the two week look ahead filter is change this from data date to focus time. And the focus time is this red dashed line. So I can move this by left clicking anywhere in the timeline at the top of the Gantt chart. And now I'm looking at two weeks from that date. So we can scroll this through the schedule to look at any particular two weeks at a time. If you want to look at a particular date, a uh, precise date, in the Windows ribbon here, open up the focus time window. And here you can use a calendar to, pr to pick a precise date. So maybe we want to do two weeks from September 1st, and we can jump directly to that date. And then you can go ahead and print this Gantt chart out. Uh, it prints what you see is what you get. So when you have the filter enabled, if you print this Gantt chart out, you can go ahead and bring that as your two week look ahead report to um, a job meeting or something like that. So that's the look ahead. Uh, you can also, if you like, you can adjust this. It is two weeks, but if you wanted to change it to three weeks, go ahead and enter 21 days and that would update. Oops. So that's the look ahead. Another filter that I want to point out is a resource filter. So this one is a custom filter. It doesn't exist in list. To add a custom filter, we just right click in this empty space and add a task filter and rename that whatever you'd like to help you remember. To actually define the filter, we're going to scroll down. And the first is the general panel. This is the different types of things that you can filter the tasks by. Um, all of these are described in the help if you want to delve into those further. Today we'll just talk about the resources. So I'll check that box, which opens up the resources tab below. And here are the resources in our project. This particular project has only 3D material resources, but if you had human resources, equipment, uh, location resources, those would also be listed here. And what you can do is just check mark all. And this is uh, filtering the task list by any task that has a resource assigned to it. So any of these resources, if they are assigned to a task, that task will show up here. So tasks that don't have resources, material procurement tasks, handover tasks, inspections, things that don't have uh, 3D objects associated with them are not going to show up in this list. So now we're just seeing tasks that do have model objects associated with them. What Another thing you can do is uh, clear that 
selection and choose a particular object or group of objects. So if I enable just the MEP resources, now I'm seeing just tasks that are associated with my MEP objects. So that's the resources filter. I'll turn that off. Another filter that is um, a combination, actually, of a task filter and a 3D filter is a critical path filter. And this one is uh, built in, it just accessed just a slightly different way. So to get to the critical path filter, you right click in your 3D window and go to filters and turn on critical path filter. So what this has done, uh, you'll see here, you'll see this uh, pop-up notification at the bottom reminding us that we need to calculate our critical path, make sure it's up to date. So the first thing to do that is just go to the home ribbon and choose compute critical path. So now we know that this com critical path is up to date. And the critical path is all of these uh, uh, tasks that are outlined in red. You can um, see if I turn this filter off briefly, the non-critical objects tasks are the solid color and the critical ones are outlined in red. So I'll turn that back on. So now we're seeing just critical tasks, just tasks that are on our critical path. Um, and we're seeing something also going on in the 3D window. So what this um, critical path filter has done is it's created a task filter by the critical path and it's also created a 3D set by critical path and those two are linked together so if you see this one below all it's doing is just filtering the 3D by the task filter so anything any tasks that are visible here objects that are assigned to the filtered tasks only are showing up down here and we've applied automatically a color scheme here. These color schemes can be applied to any of your filters uh, manually, but this one was generated automatically for the critical path. So objects that are on the critical path are showing up here in purple, and then objects that are not on the critical path or objects that are um, just in context, they're not assigned to any task at all. So any unfiltered objects are showing up in gray and mostly transparent. So as we move our focus time through the schedule, we're seeing our critical objects highlighted for us so we know what the important tasks are. And everything else is just ghosted in the background in transparent gray. So that's a pretty useful filter that combines the 3D and the task filter. Some other 3D filters that I want to point out. Um, if I correcting my view there we got a little confused if I um, want to turn on some new filters I want to create a custom 3d set we just right click here and add so I want to find a filter that shows me all my wall objects I could go in and select them from the 3d list or I can do a filter by name so I'm going to turn this wall filter on that's just what I've named it that has no effect yet and I'm gonna filter by name in the general panel and then it'll open up the name panel and I'm just gonna right click here and add a new string and I'll type in wall so now all of my objects that have the word wall in their name are showing up here so it's a really quick way to filter a particular type of object another type of 3D set that I want to point out to you is the user field uh, filter. And this is pretty powerful. Uh, user fields are parameter data that come in either with your model on import or you can add those in Synchro as well. Um, this is data like uh, constraints, object numbers, uh, part IDs, anything, um, meta any metadata that was tagged in your model or you add in Synchro. So let's just take a look at a particular one I know so these um, columns if I select one here the resource 
properties panel on the left hand si on the right hand side contains your user fields so with this object selected I can see all of the user fields that came in with that so we've got base levels we've got some dimensions and the user field that I want to look at is this construction task location and the particular column I've selected is in area one and all of these um, objects have been tagged with a particular area for where their task is going to occur. So if I wanted to filter out um, all of the pieces that are in area one, I could create a 3D set for that. So I'm just going to copy this value here and we'll use that again in a second. So in the 3D sets, again, I'm going to right click and add a new filter and I'll call this one area one. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to turn that filter on and scroll down again in the general panel. This time I'm going to activate user fields. And below, here all the list of all the user fields in the project and I want to quickly look for the task location. I can simply type here in the search bar. So now I've started looking. It's filtering anything that's got that string in it. And here's my construction task location. I'm going to enable that. So now I'm seeing in the 3D window all objects that have this particular parameter tied to it. If I want to look for all objects that have the particular value of area 1, I'm just going to type that value or paste that value right here into the value column. So now we're seeing all co um, model objects that have the area 1 for their task location. And we could adjust that value and look for area 2, for example. Um, so a quick way to use your parameter data powerfully in the model. And so you can see that it, the more data that you tag to your model, the quicker it is to filter in Synchro. So those are some built-in and custom filters that you can create both for the tasks and the 3D. I hope that was helpful, and I'd be happy to take any questions you have. Okay, so we have a question from Kenneth. How are the material resources filters made, like MEP, was that done in the CAD program? Yeah, great. Um, so that's this. what we were seeing in that filter is just this resources list. Uh, and this is when you import your models, we have all of these, this tree structure that comes in. So the MEP, I just created the top level of the tree called MEP, but right below it is the um, DWFX that I imported. And this tree structure is straight out of the, the CAD system. Um, but I created these, these top headers, the MEP, the office building, and then the rest of them were um, the files to, were imported right underneath. Okay, next question from Alex. In the 3D sets, can you describe the not and hot checkboxes? Sure. So in the 3D sets, these are actually going to be renamed in our next version uh, in 5.1 that comes out next month um, because we have gotten questions about what this means. So not is an invert. So it's, it's the opposite. So it's everything that's not included in this filter. So if I turn that on, it's everything except what I had filtered before. So it's just an invert. And the hot is the color scheme. So when we were looking at that uh, critical path filter that had a purple color scheme, so if instead of using this particular one, I turn on the, um, the hot, the color scheme for the critical path filter, I'm going to see everything in purple. Um, it can also, it's the same thing as this active color scheme. They do the exact same thing, so. Uh, there's that color scheme that we had before. So that's what the hot does, it's just the color scheme, whether or not that's active. Okay, how is the critical path defined in Synchro and how can we modify the filter by near critical? Sure, um, the critical path is under options. So how you, how you calculate that critical path is set up in options. Under Gantt chart, rescheduling, critical path. You have these options here. Um, and this, whether you do longest path or least total float, if you do least total float, you can specify um, the maximum float for critical and for subcritical tasks. So if you wanted to um, do a filter by subcritical, you can um, come into the filters 
So this was by critical. Um, the critical task is right under schedule, so if you wanted to create one manually, you can uh, turn on schedule in general. And then below we have critical and subcritical. So you would just change from critical to subcritical, and then you would see all of the tasks that are defined uh, by those options you set up. Okay, and I think the final question, how do filters impact exports? So when you're exporting a um, video, your filters are enabled. So if you can't see it in your 3D window, you won't be able to see it in your video. Um, if you're exporting a XML file, a um, schedule to Microsoft Project, your there is an option to enable to use the task filter. Uh, not necessary. You can you can have a task filter on in Synchro and choose not to use that when you're exporting your uh, Microsoft Project XML. Uh, but when you're exporting to uh, Primavera, that the task filters are not uh, not considered. No, nothing will be filtered. The whole schedule will go. Um, so I'm not sure where where you're looking to export, but sometimes the filters are considered and sometimes they're not, depending on where it's going. Okay, so I think those are all of the questions. Um, if anyone has any other questions, feel free to email Kate. Um, I'll put up my email address. All right, so thank you for joining us. Um, I'm going to be emailing a link to um, the YouTube video because we recorded this. So if you want to share it or watch it again, feel free to. Um, thank you.